we have been working through John chapter 15, and it started this last Sunday when we looked at an overview of John chapter 15, looking at some Old Testament truth, other gospels, and then what John is talking about. But today I want to just remind you of another character that is found in John chapter 15. And, and let me read the first verse of John 15 to just refresh your memory about who that other character is. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. On Sunday, we talked about Jesus and how he is the true vine. But I wanna remind you today that God the Father, he is also involved in this text. And he specifically has a relationship with Jesus. When we think about the true vine, Jesus as our savior, the one we find life and breath and strength in, there is also in the passage, God the Father, who is called the vine dresser. Later on, it says he prunes. It also says that he takes away. And ultimately, when you get to the end, it says that he will receive the glory. Jesus often is pointing others to God the Father. It is one of his main traits that you see in the Gospels. And it reminds me of a passage in Philippians chapter 2. If you take a moment and flip to Philippians chapter 2 with me, I want to just read a few verses out of Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 5, and I'll read through verse 11. It says this, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on the earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oftentimes when we read this passage in Philippians chapter 2, we focus on Jesus, his humility, and some of his traits. But I want to remind you, in this section of scripture, God the Father is involved, and we can see a picture of Jesus and God the Father's relationship. Jesus, he, he was God, and he did not consider it to be equal with God, but as something that he should grasp for. But he emptied himself, it says, and he actually became obedient is what the text says. Ultimately, God, what did he do? How did he follow up? It says that he, God exalted Jesus and bestowed his name above all names. And then ultimately, at the very end of the text, to the glory of God the Father, all focusing back on God the Father and his glory and how important it is. So when we read in the text of John 15 that I am the vine, Jesus says, and God is the vine dresser, there is this importance of the glory of God and how, what should be very, very important to all of us because the glory of God the Father is at stake. There's something important as we look through John chapter 15 in the coming weeks. Because God the Father, he prunes for the purpose of producing more fruit, for the purpose of glorifying himself. The, the fruit is so important that God the Father is involved and wants it to be a specific way. Now, oftentimes when we think of fruit, we think of tasks. We think of working with kids like what we have here on our back wall or serving in some way a task or an action. But I want to uh, challenge you just a little bit. Being a Christian, the fruit that God desires is not just tasks and action. It is greater than that. It is more powerful than that. Anybody can babysit somebody. Anybody can stand up and give announcements. But there's a difference when we consider what Paul says in Galatians chapter five. Turn there if you don't mind. Galatians chapter five. I want to just read two verses to you in Galatians chapter five, verses 22 through 23. 
It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. My thought today, as I'm thinking through God's glory and the importance of it, and that fruit is important, my mind has been brought to the importance of how we are glorifying God today. And that should be evident in the fruit of the Spirit that is evident in our lives. We should be people that truly love, that have joy, that is unspeakable, even in the wake of a pandemic, that we are peaceful, peacemakers, that we are patient, that we are kind, that there is a goodness about us that flows, that we are faithful, that we are gentle, that there is self-control. Because these are the kinds of traits that we truly reflect the Father and bring Him glory. So my thought today, just think about it. How can you practice the fruit of the Spirit, not just as a task or an action, as sending a card or something like that, but where it's truly from your heart where you're trying to glorify God because He is the one that matters. He is the vine dresser, and we will tap into that Jesus vine so that we can live for Him and glorify God better. Thanks. We are praying for you. We are proud of you. We're excited for how God's working. If you need a mask, if you need uh, DVDs about some of these videos of the past, I'm willing to get them to you. Contact us. We are grateful to serve and encourage and pray for you. Thanks. God bless.